There you go. Here we go. <sighs> no. <sighs> Did you upload the wrong slide? No, it's okay. We go to gitcurrent.org. That's how it looks like. We look for the tip tree, right? And then this happens. Come on, okay. But then I. Right, now. So we go one further to the SCAT RT, and we get early this happens, right? And then you wait a day, and you see a tag appears. And then you wait another day, and the whole print key disappears. Because this one got merged on Monday. All right? Tuesday. So, so we have left uh, like three patches and... By the way, explain what that was. I mean, is that the RT patch set? That's the remaining one. Oh, right. The remaining patch. I don't think you explained that. Yeah, I get to it later on. Oh. <laughs> but this is what we have so far for as a as a pull request. And this is what actually looks like, right? So this is like one select for x86. So I wouldn't say there's nothing that can go wrong, this merge window. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fairly limited. Now, I, I didn't double check whether you got that select right. <laughs> <laughs> but there's still an RC2, right? So wait, wait. <laughs> I, I didn't double check whether, whether he got the select right, but we can fix that after, after, after RC1. Right. <laughs> now, other than that, um, we don't have anything else in it, like maintainer wise. Do we need an entry for it? Well, maintainer RT-wise. Oh, maintainer, oh, maintainer RT. Maintainer, right. Yes. Um, yes, as? Um, so maybe I should bring a little background on this about maintainer RT. Go ahead. Uh, OK, so I'll just maybe I'll know. So basically, um, one of the things is that we noticed, well, every, we've had the RT patch and everything else, and people send code or bug reports or whatever. Now it's mainline, kind of like the RT patch is disappearing. It doesn't really need to exist. But the question is, when someone finds a real-time issue, who do they go to? Now one thing is the maintainer's file, which I would think is, very, is probably the best place for it, but it won't be for users. Users are not going to go look at the real-time. If they have a real-time issue, well, I, here's the workflow that I believe, and I want to ask, because I'm sure there's some uh, distro people here. Uh, the question is this, if this will happen. Someone using RT, finds a problem, goes to their distro and says, hey, um, I have this bug that's real-time related. And it gets assigned to one of their kernel devs. And the kernel devs looks at it and goes, I have no idea how RT works. Because really, there's, I think the, all the people that understand RT are in this room. Um, so all of, everyone else in the other rooms, are they're, they're clueless. <laughs> so when they get a bug, they're going to say, what do I do with this? And they might want to say, well, wouldn't it be great if I, I, I could imagine that they would actually go look into the maintainer's file. And if we, should we have a thing in the maintainer's file that says real time? And here's the people or the mailing list, whatever. Is that something that you think would be used? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, There's another aspect to it also for uh, kernel developers who do the driver or whatever. And they get the bug report they don't know whom to talk to, so uh, they will look into the maintainer's file and say, hey, we are all these uh, people who actually pretend to understand real time. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, uh, Honestly, it's uh, something that, uh, a kind of problem that we kind of always have because, of course, we maintain a stock kernel and a real time kernel. Honestly, especially in the last few years, uh, most of the bug reports that said uh, this is happening on the real-time kernel then ended up being issues in the stock kernel. So as of late, most of our, let's say, the tickets that we receive on the real-time kernel actually go to the stock kernel developers because they are actually 
working and so it might be that the thing is actually reproducible maybe only on our t because we know yeah. that it's more easy to reproduce but yeah so no. what i'm saying is that uh, I I, <laughs> what i'm saying is that if you add the the thing in the maintainers you might receive lots of issues that are not actually specific to rt just because it's easier to reproduce them so yeah. So that's, I think I, I'm about to repeat what Peter said because I was about to say the same thing basically is when we get it, the, the people that are sending it like, oh, I got, it's a real time problem, send it to you. We're the only ones that know, no, it's actually your that's bug. Nice. Yes. It's like lock depth. The, the thing like lock depth, I've seen people, this is something I'd like to audit lock depth before, or the, all the places in the kernel that quiet lock depth because that's one of my fears. I see people look at lock depth and go, oh, false positive, boom. And then I go look at the report yeah. and it's like, no, it wasn't a false positive. It was a real subtle process, but, uh, but they missed it from the yeah. lock depth report. So I feel the same things might happen. They say, oh, there's an RT bug, and they'll send it to us, yeah. and then say, we have to turn around and say, no, it's your bug. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. But as I said, we still need someone to tell them that. Okay, so we need an entry. We do an entry. Who wants on the list to be listed in the entry? <laughs> <laughs> Remember what uh, Yuri just said. You're going to get a flood of everyone thinking, oh, this is RT. We even know it's not. You'll get emailed. Asking for volunteers, people get volunteered to be on the list. <laughs> <laughs> Peter just said Thomas is on, but then Thomas is retiring and he's just going to set his mailbox to dev null. So. <laughs> um, anyone from the RT stable folks that want to be on that list? Yeah, Clark. <laughs> Clark. <laughs> Clark. Clark. Pick the one person that's not here. <laughs> he should. I, wait. I, I told you it's volunteer based. Yes, yes, yes. And I'm sure he's probably online. Did any, any, any face pop up? You could probably zoom it down again. I'm wondering if a face popped up. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, <clears throat> Okay, so it's going to be Clark then. That's okay. <laughs> no, he's not. Yep, he didn't show up. So I guess it's Clark. <laughs> Clark, Sebastian, Steve. Yeah. So, of course, Clark's older than you, so it's <laughs> he might retire first. Yeah, we, we, we plan to retire oh, together. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, adding to what I was saying, um, and, and I guess you, you can jump in because, I mean, those two guys are, for example, two examples of people working in a stock kernel, but we work kind of close to them, and I, and I guess the realization is that uh, probably you now acknowledge the fact that uh, those kind of problems are maybe not RT specific. So what I'm saying is that uh, I guess as a start it makes sense because then you are it's kind of uh, telling people and educating people in the long run. So it might be that you receive lots of bug reports right now, but maybe in a year or something people start realizing okay, it's not very RT specific. It's a problem to solve. So which I think basically another question to ask is do we need an entry in the documentation directory for real time? that basically, I don't know, right now it would just be like one file, I would assume, just like what is RT or whatever thing is, but uh, I'll get right there. The, uh, um, uh, because that's another thing is a lot of people don't know. And, and if we had, do you think it's an RT bug? And you'll know, have mm -hmm. yes, no, you know, maybe we have to document these things. Uh, and, 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 so, sorry. Well, well, and, and, uh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, just quickly. Uh, another thing that we do is to make sure that uh, they, I mean, who's reporting tested the same thing without the, the real-time kernel. Because sometimes it's actually reproducible also without the real-time kernel, oh. and it's time spent that you... Yeah. Now they're one and the same. Yeah, and then that, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so any, anybody that's uh, monitored any new kernel bugs that have come in knows that there's hundreds, hundreds, thousands, and thousands. So um, if there's going to be a misconception of what... CDE for each one. Exactly. So if there's going to be a misconception, is this a real-time bug or, or a generic kernel bug, uh, if you have one person in that mailing list, it, you might as well throw away that email address because they're going to get flooded. So you know, maybe it's best to have a, a, you know, a mailing list, not an individual uh, or a group, of, a group of maintainers because, uh, yeah, I could just see, see flooding... Like right now, we have RT users, uh, or Linux RT users mailing list, which is not the proper place. And well, but hello. Um, the uh, the one thing I think we mentioned too is having a Linux RT devel, and having that just be a mailing list that will go to. So let's just put that as the mailing list, and, and everyone send to that. So if there's any question, you have Linux RT devel, send it there, and and then it will go to Dev Null, but no one will know. <laughs> <laughs> so doing the list then. What? So we do the list as well? Yes, we do the list. I, and, and Constantine's here, because I think I'll just tell him to create one. 
No, okay, so that's easy going. <clears throat> so we're good here? Yep. Um, what's left? The atomic console for the A250 is the only one that we have in RT. This is not merged. This is um, being worked on for the merge window coming next, right? That's correct. Um, there's bottom half trouble with um, force-threaded, for instance, and networking, like for one example. This is being worked on, but this is going on. Um, what's not in as of today is, for instance, ARM, PowerPC, and a few other things, like pre out. ARM 32, you mean, right? Yeah. yeah that's not what I ARM say 64. ARM. I'm, otherwise, I would say ARM 64. ARC 64. Or ARC, yes. <laughs> <laughs> is anyone interested in ARM 32, PowerPC? I left out Spark, not Spark, MIPS by accident a few releases back. No one noticed. <laughs> <laughs> You think there's still armed people? That's, well, actually, we were told. But uh, like, OK, this is something we brought up. The reason why is because we kind of were talking about this to the stable uh, thing. Because right now, it's kind of like all the stable folks are kind of retiring. Um, went there because we were going, oh, here's another thing I, I want to let everyone know, too. Uh, as soon as RT goes, it's like, uh, you know, what's called 612 is released, we're looking at all the at uh, dates for the current uh, stable releases. And we're going to lock them for RT for ourselves. Because always, it seems that those you know end of life end of life for an old kernel seems to keep creeping forward, keeping forward, creeping forward, and we're like, oh, grad, like like we we're thinking like, oh, in Dece this December of this year, I'm done with this, and then you look at it and it went, oh, it's December of next year, <laughs> like what the heck? So no, we're going to say this and we're going to basically make it that um, w the uh, stable releases for that. So basically, we have, I guess we have six 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 zero five fifteen. Uh, 5.0, I think, or 5, 4, 510, 419, which is which is the end of life of this year of yes. December. And there he is. <laughs> so once the 612 is released, we're just locking those dates in. If they forward it and someone says, oh, I thought you're going to need help, we'll say, great, supply us with someone and we'll train them. Daniel has a great set of tools. The art, uh, what's it called? The ST thing, whatever. SRT. SRT, thank you. Uh, he's, uh, stable real-time tools, uh, yeah. right, something like that. Um, but he has, it's very much automated. Joseph here, uh, you, we came in. How long did it take for you to really become, you know, one of the? A month. A month? Three weeks. Yep. Yeah. So, um, so basically three weeks for a month of training. So if someone wants a support a kernel that we're not going to support anymore, if you have people, we're, we're happy to help train them. But we're not going to do it ourselves. Just FYI. And like I said, with ARM and these, if you say, wait, but you know, 612, like we'll support everything as we do of the old ones, but for 612, you know, we're not going to support a 612 ARM. We're not doing it. And that's what I was going to ask. We're not going to do it. So we drop ARM right away. And, and if someone asks us, I said, great, give us someone, and we will train them up to do it. That's the, it's not we're doing it. I believe that was the decision we kind of made, was it? Steve? Was, As a perspective on ARM, so 80% of the patches I merge are for 64-bit, but they're still 32-bit. It's, at this point, mostly existing users, but there are existing users with RT kernels that are still updating their kernels, and that will continue for a number of years. So they are, they are there. There are not that many, but we can't just ignore them, unlike MIPS. And uh, I probably will say that, that if I understand correctly, there's only like four patches for the ARM port that's missing. Yeah, which were ignored since 10 years. Or so. Yeah, so they have not been touched for like 10 years. So like the forward porting of ARM bars is four patches that have not been, those have not gone upstream, but we don't plan on it. But to be uh, completely honest here, um, Russell did report, and I tried to get the four big ones first, and then I have a few others left, which uh, I didn't present to Russell at all. So I had like, First, the thick big ones and the small ones. And if I don't get the big ones, I don't need to care about the small ones. So, okay. is it similarly true for PowerPC? I mean, I can I, I I saw your patches and I saw that you know some bits of PowerPC is missing. We like to get the support. I, as far as I know, there are no current use cases or there's no no one is rightly using RT in PowerPC. But we like to get the support, and I can you know volunteer to you know get the support on PowerPC. Okay. Give me, give me your email address. 
Put some on repeat. I didn't get a word. I'm sorry. <laughs> Email me your email address. For what? <laughs> So it, it would be nice to have a, an RT def config that would also disable things where RT is not welcome, like transparent huge pages. Oh, wait, that's actually disabled automatically. Well, yeah, we usually have uh, like uh, transparent, like a lot of those things are, uh, you know, has it depends on not preempt RT. Yes, you're right, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, what might be good is have a def config, I don't know, maybe we could go through and find just various things that are not turned off that just, you know, like here's your def things. Devconfig would be helpful. But coming back to PowerPC after 6.12, it's easy. We don't care about it. The PowerPC people can, can take care of, of it themselves if they want to have it. Oh, you said you volunteer. Yeah, great. No, 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 but it ha doesn't have to go through us anymore. Yeah. Right. It's an upstream problem now. <laughs> Wait 20 years to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Who is the RT person on maintainers, on the maintainers file? You can email that person, right? Yeah. Yeah, sure. I mean, you can. Obviously, people can CC those people on the in the maintainers file to to help reviewing uh, patches and whatever. That's obvious, but it doesn't have to go through something anymore. I mean, we can carry it in the out of tree patch for a while. Well, I think we start probably the out of tree patch, but also I'm thinking um, the stable RT could still exist. Yeah. So the state, we still have to continue stable RT until everything goes. But if someone wants to say, "Hey, I'll continue PowerPC, PowerPC for 6.12," we like you know 6.12. You could cre create create that would be under like the stable kernel. Like so, it'd be kind of a stable thing. The other thing why we probably have to keep the, the preempt RT series or the, the, the patch series around stuff like I915 and if you have, so uh, it's also a good breeding ground for, oh, we want to enable whatever transparent huge pages or something, you can stick it in there and let uh, RT users test them out because they, they are used to Hey, we apply a, another pile of patches on top um, just to breed them out and figure out whether there's something which is going to breaks, break uh, tomorrow. Um, so for a while, we probably will have the, uh, the, the series around for various things. Yeah. <laughs> So Sebastian Patchkey will be RT next or? So no RT next at all, so yeah, not planned. Not the RT, RT, RT. Well, that BH work that is going on, this is most likely be stuff upstream as soon as possible or in big pipes, but I don't think I need to carry it around. So I think yeah. what's going to happen? I'm going to still, okay, now I, I want to ask you, so this is what's going to basically happen, just like F trace. Okay, I'll just use the F trace thing or tracing. You know, I have a tracing, you know, Linux tracing tra get, get repo that, you know, Masami and myself maintain. You know, you could have now a preempt RT or preempt real time uh, thing. Yeah, but, but, look, but, but I'm saying is no, but that is where you, you're not containing patches. You're not doing that. That's where you could go to Linus and say, this is ready, pull request to Linus. I mean, as a development tree like TIP, not, it's no longer a, this tree that's like out of tree patch. Now, like I said, what you're saying, you're doing the development upstream. Now you're going to be switching into an upstream workflow. But right? I'm still going through networking, through scheduler forks, and so on. I'm not no, no, but directly. that's the, but no, but no, that's but still that's the hierarchy. I'm saying is that that's still the the upstream workflow. You're like okay, you'll push it to tip, and then tip will pull it in there. So you're. I don't know. You've, I don't think you've ever like you do. You have worked with that, but I'm saying with the RT patch, it's always been. The RT develops has been has been basically what we called upstream for RT. Your patch was, and we would backport from you, and you never actually pushed that stuff directly. I mean, except for like, don't you usually go to tip, like push it to tip, and then tip depends it. uh, if it's scheduler, it goes through Peter. Oh yeah, Peter. Yeah, Ingo but no. So what I'm saying is, you're no longer like right now. You have a RT tree, like RT next, and you put in the dash RT and all that stuff. That's going away. It's now just 
no 612. And you're just your own tree, so you're just going to do your modifications, right? Your development, you know, just like I do development for, like I have a bunch of things for tracing that I do, and then when I'm done, I send it out. It's not like a, I don't have a, you know, Linux ftrace tree. It's just a, your own Git tree that you just are just feeding into upstream. Does that make, whoops, uh, I want to say get a hand up first. The person doing that should be the person with the name on the maintainer's file. Sorry, sorry to tell you that, but uh, <laughs> but uh, makes sense, right? Ma makes sense because that's the way to get into uh, the main line. So maybe uh, the tree should be in Linux next. So everything in that tree should be the stuff that's yes. de destined for the next kernel. Right. So basically, that's it. Yeah. So you'll be just you'll have a for next or something or next. Uh, branch that you know when you feel like it's ready, you put it in there, and then it goes to Stephen, and he'll put it into the the next but Linux next tree and continue what? What? No, any. I mean, say if you find something that's your fix. Oh, so you're done working on upstream real time totally? Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so, for, for example, the the stuff that you're working on still on the networking, they're they're gonna be. I mean, once uh, accepted. From the mailing list, they're going to be in some tree of some networking maintainer, right? Right. So you don't need like an additional yeah. thing for. But I'm not going to send it for next before the net people agreed on it. Yeah, yeah, that's what I Yeah, I mean, I mean, from now on, if you look at the, the, the outstanding serial stuff or, so, or something like that, this goes all through the to the, the subsystem maintainers now. So we, we left the, the esoteric out of tree stage. Finally. <laughs> I'm going to actually end this uh, conference a little bit early because I have to get ready for the next one. And um, what's it called? First of all, I have um, chocolates to give out. Whoa. So I don't know. First, actually, I was going to give it to Jan Kirska, but I don't see him here. So maybe he just forfeited. <laughs> what? I can see it. Well, sh okay, sh okay. Who should I give these chocolates to? Anyone have any votes for it? I mean, I could have done a poll. So, uh, anyone have any preference? Like, of the, any talk you liked that you wanted to give? I could do the poll up there. I thought about doing it. Just want some chocolates. Okay, you got it. Yep. Okay. Because you're trying to throw him under the bus. Well, yeah, yeah, So, uh, uh, and then you know how about? Um, John Cage. Well, you said no, you don't want it because you said you had enough chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> so, wait, where's the, um, who was else that uh, gave a talk that's still here? What? Yeah. So, you're, you're, you're front, so I guess you get it. <laughs> so, thank you, everyone.